George Soros. He has ties to over 30 major news organizations and donates large amounts of money to progress the New World Order. Just so you can see for yourself what kind of man he is, here are some of his quotes. It is sort of a disease when you consider yourself some kind of God, the creator of everything, but I feel comfortable about it now since I began to live it out. I admit that I have always harbored an exaggerated view of my self-importance. To put it bluntly, I fancied myself as some kind of God or an economic reformer like Keynes, each with his general theory, or even better, a scientist like Einstein, reflexivity sounds like relativity. If truth be known, I carried some rather potent messianic fantasies with me from childhood, which I felt I had to control. Otherwise, I might end up in the loony bin. But when I made my way into the world, I wanted to indulge myself in my fantasies to the extent I could afford. What sort of a financial deal should Obama be seeking to strike when he travels to China next month? No, I think this would be the time because you really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, um, uh, world order. Uh, um, uh, uh, world order, world order, world order. Is there going to be sort of a tipping point, a moment at which the dollar is fatally weakened, or does it just sort of carry on? A, a, an orderly decline of the dollar is actually a, a desirable. Um, a decline in the value of the dollar is necessary in order to uh, compensate for the fact that the U.S. economy will remain rather weak, will be a drag on the global economy. Uh, uh, China will emerge as the motor replacing the U.S. consumer. And of course it's a smaller motor because the Chinese economy is much smaller. So the world economy will have less of a motor. So it will move forward slower than it has in the last uh, 25 years. But China will be the, the, the engine driving it forward and the US will be actually a, a drag that's being pulled along through a gradual decline in the value of the dollar. So there would be a slow uh, um, decline in the value of the dollar. And this man who was in support of Obama has also been in support of Hillary Clinton. He has donated millions to back her in this whole quest to try to uh, get his people into power. And as you can see here, he has dropped another $15 million just to try to stop Trump and to mobilize Latinos. Now, that's two avenues right there that he's working down. Another, and this, this goes on and on when it comes to Soros. Another is this moveon.org, which he supports and funds. This is tied to uh, socialist people that are in this, and I'll show you that here in a second. This moveon.org took credit for the chaos that happened in Chicago. They show by their comments that everyone that came out, uh, they thanked them for coming out and doing what they did to try to stop Donald Trump, and it was all put into motion by this moveon.org that Soros backs. George Soros has a big interest in Clinton. When the man spent $25 million, and this is just what we know of, who knows what else has gone down behind the scenes. What is very clear here is that he has given $25 million to Hillary Clinton. And this is a man that's worth almost $25 billion. $24.9 billion. You were looking at George Soros. In my opinion, one of the most evil and wicked men on this planet. He is a big-time insider, an elitist, a globalist. He's part of the 1% for sure. He is well-connected, and he has had his hands involved in many different uh, revolutions, uh, overthrows of governments, coup d'etats, you name it. Now, this guy has been across the headlines here recently, and I just want to take a quick look to see what he's up to. Well, in Russia, 
they passed a law back in June that requires the Prosecutor General's Office and the Foreign Ministry to draw up an official list of undesirable foreign organizations and outlaw their activities. And many of George Soros's uh, NGOs, non-governmental organizations, uh, his groups were found on this list. His foundations were on this list, topping the list, actually. This Russian law states that any Russian citizen found to be participating with any of these foundations or groups linked directly to Soros uh, would be illegal and you would be punished by you know heavy fines and up to imprisonment. This comes as no surprise to me as Soros was one of the main key players in the coup that took place in Ukraine right on Russia's doorstep, replacing that democratically elected government with their own puppet regime. George Soros is also one of the main investors in Obama's new clean energy research plan. Obama is currently in Paris, France at COP21, the UN Climate Change Summit, right now. So, if you look at the players involved with what's going on with this UN Climate Summit, part of their 2030 agenda, you have the likes of George Soros, Bill Gates, and many others who have a long history of not having the people's best interests in mind. These are eugenicists and evil men. They want to depopulate the planet. Essentially, this climate summit, uh, they look to gain wealth and power and authority by taking something that naturally occurs in our environment and transforming it and promoting it as a crisis that will affect everyone on the planet. And they'll sell the population a solution in exchange for higher taxes and increased authority over every aspect of our lives. Another big move George Soros has made recently is selling tens of millions of dollars of stocks in the big banks such as JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and he sold those stocks for less than what they were worth so he took a big hit on selling these stocks and he bought gold. Now people often look to these insiders as sort of the canary in the coal mine. When they start dumping and selling stocks and betting against the banks People see this as a warning sign, like he knows something that's coming down the pike. This guy didn't get to be one of the most rich and powerful men in the world by accident. He is a big time insider. So it's leaving a lot of people speculating that something big is coming down the line. Now this man has single-handedly not over owned, overthrown governments, but also uh, currencies by doing moves just like this. It's been revealed by the Cyber Burkett Hacker Group that Soros sent a lot of emails to the Ukrainian leadership after the, uh, after the Maidan revolution uh, happened, uh, urging them to uh, do certain steps. First of all, in one of the letters, he said that Ukraine should be provided with lethal military assistance from the United States. Uh, in order to achieve its goals, something, of course, being very heavily discussed in the United States over the past several months, and whether the President of the United States would actually take such a, ver such a risky step. Uh, he also said that Ukrainian personnel should be trained outside of Ukraine on NATO bases in Romania so that there would be no suspicion of NATO boots on the Ukrainian soil. In a separate letter to the Ukrainian leadership, Mr. Soros also instructed them as to what steps they should do in the economy. Uh, one of those said, and I quote, restore some semblance of currency stability and a functioning banking system, end of quote. That is despite Soros himself admitting uh, the dire state of the Ukrainian banking system and economy in general. Well, those may sound like just recommendations if they were not coming from a man who openly admitted to backing several revolutions and changes of regimes in countries uh, where his interests lay over the years. George Soros is a thug who's deployed as an economic hitman for the British Empire. He was trained at the London School of Economics and later picked up by an associate of the Rothschilds. He will then use the funds handed to him to launch financial warfare, stealing billions of dollars, and then, using some of these proceeds, finance programs such as drug legalization, euthanasia, and political cults such as MoveOn.org to destroy a nation's ability to resist imperial rule. But of course, Soros' demented thinking should not solely be attributed to himself, but rather, it was partially generated by his handlers during his formative adolescent years. 
These are pictures from 1944 of what happened to George Soros's friends and neighbors. You're a Hungarian Jew who mm -hmm. escaped the Holocaust mm -hmm. by posing as a Christian. Right. And you watched lots of people get shipped off to the death camps. Right. I was 14 years old. And I would say that that's when my character was made. In what way? That one should think ahead. And one should understand and, and anticipate events. And when, when one is threatened, it was a tremendous threat of evil. I mean, it was a, a very personal experience of evil. My understanding is that you went out with this protector of yours who swore that you were his adopted godson. Yes, yes. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property from the Jews. Yes, that's right, yes. I mean, that sounds like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? No, not at all. Not at all. Maybe as a child you don't, uh, you don't see the connection. But it, was, uh, it created no, uh, no problem at all. No feeling of guilt? No. For example, that I'm Jewish, and here I am watching these people go. I could just as easily be there. I could be there. None of that? Well, of course, I could, uh, I could be on the other side. Or I could be the one for whom the thing is being taken away. But there was no sense that I shouldn't be there. Because that was, uh, well, actually, in a funny way, it's just like the market. Uh, that if I weren't there, uh, of course, I wasn't doing it, but somebody else would, would, would be taking it away anyhow. And it was the, uh, whether I was there or not, I was only a spectator. The property was being taken away, so the I had no role in taking away that property, so I had no sense of guilt. After being psychologically prepared through his collaboration with the Nazis, George Soros naturally traveled to England in 1947 to seek further training at the London School of Economics. There he became the protege of radical positivist Karl Popper who influenced Soros' latter project, the Open Society Institute, which coincided with Popper's imperial view, that empires have the absolute right to launch wars against the so-called uncivilized third world to establish peace. Just as the British East India Company established peace by enforcing their opium trade on China with gunboats. Now we have a global capitalist system. The power of the states is greatly reduced which in incidentally I, I applaud, uh, but uh, nevertheless th there isn't an international political process to keep pace with the internationalization of our economy. Left alone, states do not maintain peace. We need an international organization aimed at keeping peace. In the 19th century, we had a global capitalist system. Uh, and it was Great Britain, representing the imperial power, that maintained stability. Currently, we have no system of peace. In some ways, the 19th century version of the global capitalist system was more stable than the current one. There were imperial powers, Britain foremost among them, that derived enough benefits from being at the center of the global capitalist system to justify dispatching gunboats to faraway places to preserve the peace or collect debts. To no surprise, after his civilized training in London, Soros was soon to become the Anglo-Dutch oligarchy's most devoted monkey. According to former associates, George Soros was given his startup money to launch the offshore quantum fund NV by none other than Baron Edmund de Rothschild's right-hand man, George Karlweiss. With funds of this type, Soros would conduct financial warfare through derivatives and currency speculation. His first major mission was plotted on June the 2nd, 1992, when representatives of Soros, along with other Anglo-Dutch financial predators, met on Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's yacht de Britannia while in the presence of the Queen herself. The task was to rip apart Europe's financial structure to maintain stable exchange rates, 
then known as the European Rate Mechanism, and replace it with the Maastricht Treaty, which established the euro as the single European currency, hence putting full financial authority in the hands of one central bank controlled by the Anglo-Dutch financial establishment. Now this was part of a plot which was set up to create what we now see forming out of the Lisbon Treaty, this idea of a United States of Europe sort of thing, which is that the basically you're doing away with national sovereignty. It's not like the United States that we, in the way that we think of it, but it's the idea of doing away with national sovereignty, creating some sort of a European government. And we've seen now that we have the European currency, the euro. The European rate mechanism was the first step in this. So this was set up with a number of nations involved. The British were part of it to help get it set up, but the British didn't want to stay in it because they prefer to manipulate it from outside because this is a trap for the rest of Europe but to be manipulated by the Brits but the Brits don't want to subject themselves to it. So Soros's role in all of this was as a front man for a move by the Bank of England and allied financial powers to s pull the pound out of the European rate mechanism. Now this is pretty funny because Soros this operation got Soros known as the man who broke the pound or the man who broke the Bank of England when in fact he was just a front man and a stooge for the Bank of England in this whole process. It's easy to prove that George Soros did not break the Bank of England mm -hmm. and the proof of that is that George Soros is still alive. He's still being used as a British asset. Mm -hmm. If he had actually done what, they, what the myth says he did, they'd have killed him. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the way it works. You, you don't take on that power and get away with it. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Soros is walking around doing their bidding today proves that he never did. He was always an agent of theirs. He's mm -hmm. always been a front man and a stooge for the British Empire. The economy of the Soviet bloc itself is a terrible and worsening figure. In Western European culture, we have demonstrated that the successes of nations of big industries depends upon the technologically progressive independent farmer and what is called here in Germany the Mittelstand. Soviet culture in its present form is not capable of applying this lesson. Despite all attempts at structural reform and despite any amount of credit supplied by the foolish West, the Soviet bloc economy as a whole has reached the critical point. At its present time, in its present form, it will continue to slide downhill from here on, even if the present worldwide food crisis had not come into being. In the 1980s, anticipating the collapse of the Soviet bloc, Lyndon LaRouche proposed East-West cooperation to develop Eastern Europe and Eurasia. After the Berlin Wall came down in 1989, the LaRouche movement organized in leading circles of Europe around the Paris-Berlin-Vienna Productive Triangle program and then the Eurasian land bridge for capital-intensive, energy-dense infrastructure and industrial buildup to provide better living standards along corridors of development reaching all across Eurasia. But within the British Empire, a handful of strategic planners saw this moment as an opening for the drastic turn toward their system of world empire. Just as the statesman Lyndon LaRouche was being forced into jail in the most disgraceful, fraudulent trial in American history, the same Anglo-Dutch forces that had moved to destroy LaRouche unleashed their golem, George Soros, upon Eurasia. As the Soviet Union declined, the economic hitmen moved in. Poland. With the registration of Soros Stefan Batory Foundation in 1988, was ground zero for the European test run of Harvard economist Jeffrey Sachs' shock therapy model. This program of Shaktian monetary austerity, slave labor, and the wrecking of benefit and pension guarantees for state workers would be used throughout the region to implement free market looting. George Soros was in the midst of the effort to cultivate a new leadership which would implement the radical free market model even before the Soviet Union cracked. In 1990, 
he financed foreign jurists and economists to prepare documentation in support of the Chatalan Plan, also known as the 500 Days Plan for shifting the USSR to free market economics, shutting down the Soviet military industrial economy, and imposing budgetary discipline. Academician Leonid Abalkin and then Soviet Finance Minister Valentin Pavlov blocked full adoption of the Chatalan Plan in 1990. But the next year, its foreign sponsors saw a new chance. The free market gurus and think tanks that helped redraw the economic map of Britain during the 1980s are planning an ideological invasion of the Soviet Union in the belief that the failed coup has rendered the empire ripe for a dose of Thatcherism. Although their influence may have diminished at home, the Thatcherites believe that the events of the last few days have created the perfect new laboratory to test their ideas. In 1991, when the Soviet Union came to an end, Ukraine declared its independence right after the shadowy attempted coup of August 1991, Boris Yeltsin, he became president of Russia. And through various political maneuvers, unfortunately, the backers of the authors of the Shatalin plan, the 500 days plan, the most radical schemes of deregulation, privatization, whooshed into the government of Russia in December 1991 as a group. And in January 1992, set out to uh, implement the radical deregulation ideas. Within five years of shock price decontrol, privatization of state industry, sell-off of military stockpiles, and opening the borders for smuggling of everything from raw materials, weapons, and drugs, Russia's economy collapsed. The labor force shifted from production to various forms of criminal activity. The living standard plunged, and the former Soviet region saw the fastest expansion of the drug trade and drug use in the world. Think for a moment what happens in a nation where 70 percent of the industry is you know, heavy industry, military oriented, and the economy as a whole is monopolized. What happens if you take a, a, an economy like that and decontrol prices overnight? In 2003, Soros greatly scaled back his efforts in Russia to focus on the United States. You're not strong by putting other people down. You're strong by lifting other people up. That's our responsibility. The disgusting impotence of the Democratic Party with the ongoing presidential election represents Soros' methods of popular subversion in the field of U.S. politics. It was MoveOn.org, an organization largely funded by Soros himself, that played a significant role in Obama's capture of the nomination despite Hillary Clinton's clear command of the popular vote. MoveOn.org got its start by leading the charge to censure President Bill Clinton as the fascist wing of the Democratic Party fed the media frenzy to destroy him over the Monica Lewinsky scandal in 1998. This was a setup, reacting to Bill Clinton's echo of Lyndon LaRouche's call for a new Bretton Woods in the face of an exploding financial crisis. Recognizing the ignorant qualities of MoveOn, Soros and his associates contributed over $6.2 million to the organization in 2003. By 2004, Move On was practically owned by George Soros. During that period, the Move On crowd heavily promoted a professional loser, Howard Dean, for president. In 2006, Move On waged a campaign against Dick Cheney's Halliburton dropping Halliburton's stock to a meager $26 a share. While Move On railed, Soros gradually bought almost 2 million shares of the deflated stock, eventually comprising over 2% of his total portfolio and establishing Halliburton as Soros' biggest investment that year. Almost suddenly, Move On's crusade against Cheney's war fell silent. Halliburton's stock value gradually increased, and Soros made another killing, almost $40 million in profit off of the very grouping he pretended to despise. This is the character of that demented creature, George Soros, a creature 
who operates not of his own volition, but on orders which he receives from the British Empire. Their intention, knowing that their globalized free trade system has come to an end, is to prevent a Franklin Roosevelt-style presidency at all costs and to replace it with a system of world empire. Therefore, those associated with Soros and his MoveOn.org cult must come to recognize their foolishness and sever all ties to this amoral Nazi collaborator. Because if you succeed in falling into their trap, then into the fiery depths of hell will they take us all. A lot of people are arguing about presidents. Who is going to be the president? Who should be the president? Who's the best man for the job? If they're not puppets by the time they reach inauguration, they will be assassinated. Soros has been identified as a frontman of the Anglo-French Rothschilds banking group. And of course, neither he nor the Rothschilds want this fact to be public, but there are many connections to be made between these two. In Soros, the unauthorized biography, pages 5 and 6. As September 15th wore on, George Soros' confidence that Britain would pull the pound out of the ERM was growing. It had been Stanley Drunkenmiller who had thought the time ripe for making a bet against the Sterling. He talked to Soros about doing something. Soros gave him the green light, but urged his head trader to bet an even larger sum than Drunkenmiller had in mind. And so Drunkenmiller, acting for Soros, sold $10 billion worth of Sterling. The next morning at 7 o'clock, the phone rang at Soros' home. It was Stan Drunkenmiller with news. While George Soros had slept, he racked a profit of $958 million. When Soros' gains from the other positions he took during the ERM crisis were tallied, he racked up close to $2 billion. It was this bet, this single act of placing $10 billion on the fact that Britain would have to devalue the pound that made George Soros world famous. In Time Magazine, September 1st, 1997, Soros said of this event, I had no platform, so I deliberately did the Sterling thing to create a platform. In 1997, during the Asian financial crisis, the then Malaysian Prime Minister, Mahathar bin Mohammed, accused him of bringing down the Malaysian currency. In Thailand, he was branded an economic war criminal who sucks the blood from the people. It's clear to see that George Soros is a major player. He's a 64-year-old Hungarian with an American passport that is devaluing currencies all across the world. His progressive ideology is being forced on the American people. This 64-year-old senior citizen that is not even from our country provide at least 33 million in a single year to radical leftist groups orchestrating protests and unrest in Ferguson, Missouri and nationwide according to an explosive investigation into filings of globalist financiers philanthropic tax exempt open society foundations. Dozens of Soros funded outfits help lobby the media bust in astroturf protesters and community organizers coordinate propaganda message create an echo chamber and more the Washington Times revealed so can you believe this he's not even a citizen of our country and he's busing in protesters organizers and we all know what happened in Ferguson it was a violent mess complete chaos he's a race baiter and he's trying to call civil unrest in our country and people don't see this all they see is black this white this Jew this Muslim this these people are causing this to happen. They are propaganda all over the place. And people don't realize that they're falling for this propaganda. When you watch CNN, when you watch Fox, when you watch all these companies, George Soros has his hand in almost every single one of them. Okay, and not only him, all these elitists have their hands in these media organizations. It's nothing but propaganda. They're feeding the information that you see. If you can watch these propaganda organizations and keep in mind what they're trying to do, you might be alright. If not, it's best to turn it off. Quit watching it. It's their form of control. He dumps billions of dollars into these fake grassroots companies that he just makes up to fit his agenda.
grassroots companies normally operate in a way that the citizens have a problem and they try to solve it through a grassroots organization. What he's doing is he's paying to operate a grassroots organization and paying the members to do the job that he wants to have done. It would be like if I wanted to lower the cost of ice cream. So I funded a grassroots organization and made it their goal to lower the cost of ice cream while I sit back and have no involvement other than a donation. This is the same way that the Nazis accomplished many of their goals. George Soros is nothing more than a Nazi. He's a man that pushes propaganda, invests his money where he thinks he can make a difference and lead toward his globalization goal of the New World Order. A few other events that have happened that link George Soros to him are the Occupy Wall Street and the turmoil in Ukraine. He gives more than $1.8 million to radio stations like NPR. So those of you that are listening to NPR, you are listening to the agenda of a 64-year-old non-resident of the United States. You're listening to the propaganda of a New World Order elitist. So I suggest that you find a new radio station. Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister of Soros' birth nation, stated that he has to deal with tens of thousands of second and third world immigrants streaming into his country and other European nations while Soros lives free of such inconveniences in his $10 million mansion outside of New York City. Soros himself is responsible for many of the migrant problems in Europe. He is basically destroying Europe for his own gain. There's a common divide and a common double standard with these elitists. They want the borders to be shut down and allow immigrants in everywhere, but yet they themselves would not have that. They live in $10 million castles and even bigger, while the regular people like us are being infiltrated by violent criminals and terrorists because of their policies.